Welcome to this podcast featuring biomolecules, subtitled The Stuff Cells Are Made Of. You may be wondering what the Lego connection is. I'll explain that a little bit later. But essentially, this podcast is about describing materials that make up our cells and by extension our bodies. So you may have heard this uh, or, or uh, seen this phrase before, you are what you eat, but literally you are what you eat. Your body is a combination of the molecules that you put into it. And uh, so a healthy lifestyle is really about eating um, smartly. You may have seen nutrition labels like this. Uh, this graphic basically is showing um, how you would go about interpreting or reading the, the key details. The purpose for me bringing this up now is to identify some things. For example, we have total fats, we have carbohydrates, we have proteins. So really, what are those? What do they do in our cells? Uh, where do we get them from? Um, that's really gonna be the focus for today. So this is the podcast outline. So we basically have four major biomolecules, uh, proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and lipids. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about each of them as we go through. So big idea here and during understanding is that cells have certain structures uh, made of biomolecules that do certain jobs. And so biomolecules build cell parts and that's really part of our metabolism. What that means is we take in food and we digest it and then we take the raw materials from that digestion process and then use it to rebuild body parts that maybe have been broken down or just have aged out to the point that they're kind of uh, scrapped in your body and then replaced. Uh, the definition for biomolecule is any organic or carbon-based molecule that is an essential part of a living organism. Uh, here the word organic has just the meaning of it's carbon-based, meaning that you'll find the element carbon in it. In grocery stores, for example, the use of organic means that that was food that was prepared or grown in the absence of pesticides or other chemicals. So this is a little different meaning, but um, I think you get the point. So when we think about monomers and polymers and building blocks, they're all related. So I go back to some of my favorite childhood toys, which were Legos. And Legos are great because you can create so many different kinds of things from them. They're colorful, they're tactile, they're hands-on. And I think, um, you know, ages, you know, young to old like Legos. So I'm using Legos in this case, just to kind of prove the point that Lego building blocks like this yellow and, and red brick that you're seeing on your screen are really like the building blocks of carbohydrates and proteins and whatnot. And so it's a single unit. So mono means one, mer means part. So monomer is a single part unit. The polymer by contrast is the entire structure. So you can see from these really cool converse uh, um, kicks, I guess you could call them, they are built from many smaller parts. And so a polymer, poly meaning many, mer meaning part, it is the large thing that is built from the small parts. So you need to be able to grasp this concept between monomer and polymer. So polymer monomer relationship. So basically understand that a polymer is broken down into many different kinds of monomers. And there's four main kinds of polymers. Those are basically the four building blocks that I had shown on the previous slide, the, the carbohydrates, the lipids, the nucleic acids, and the carbohydrates. Uh, when we digest food, we take polymers and we break them down through a process called catabolism. And it's the monomers that our body actually craves and needs to do the job that we demand of our bodies. So you should be able to switch between the monomer and the polymer relationship. Um, when uh, this podcast is over and in, in a future class, you'll get a, a worksheet that looks like this. And basically, having gone through this podcast, it should be reasonable that you could fill in this chart. The second page of that worksheet looks like this. You'll see that to the left there's a word bank and then there are all these different structures, chemical structures of different molecules. So you should be able to use this review of form and function and then basically fill out the chart. So let's uh, start with proteins. Proteins are building blocks. They are essentially the, the bricks, if you will, that, that build our bodies all of the proteins and the enzymes in our bodies are really um, made of amino acids which then turn into larger polymers. So this is what a monomer looks like. So you would recognize that um, this is a nitrogen, this together, this NH2 is an amino group. To the right we have a COOH group and together we call that the carboxyl group. 
Um, so it is actually an amino acid. So the right half of the molecule actually can lose the hydrogen and um, that'll make an acid condition. And then you'll notice that there's this box that says R in it. Basically, that's just a placeholder. So there's 20 different amino acids and each amino acid has its unique R group. And um, that's basically a way to distinguish each amino acid from each other. So it's like um, each of us having fingerprints. There's a, there's a unique aspect of each of us and that's the unique aspect of the monomer, the building block of a protein. The polymer looks somewhat like this. Uh, proteins can be lots of different sizes and shapes. This is just a computer uh, space filling model that shows how um, it might look in your body. You'll notice that it kind of looks like this cluster or globular kind of structure. Uh, that's just uh, the folded up three dimensional version of the protein. So as I said before, there's a certain look to an amino acid. You can see that uh, labeled here on the picture. So understand that there's just a lot of variability in the building blocks. And that makes sense because we have ligaments and tendons and we have muscles, hair, skin, all of those things need various kinds of proteins. And so we need to have lots of diverse molecules to build from. So if we go back to the Lego sort of uh, concept, the theme that you had seen on slide one and, and following, uh, if you were to think about Legos as building blocks and think about them in this context as amino acids, you'll see that there's a red and a blue and a yellow and a, and a green Lego, and I've labeled them amino acids one to four. We could connect them in lots of different combinations. We could go red to blue to yellow to green, or we can go red to green to blue to yellow. So you'd have some flexibility to make different kinds of amino acids, but the concept is that amino acids, they connect to each other in something that might look like this. So the sequence may be different, the lengths might be different, but again, uh, the polymer-monomer relationship is the, the, the entire connected unit of four Legos would be the protein. And if we were to uh, digest them, so to speak, we could pop off the red amino acid one, and that would be its own individual building block that can then be repurposed or reused to build something else in our body. Understand that we can look at the chemical structure and we understand that there is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. We can see that in this picture right here. And what's not pictured in this, uh, this graphic is the presence of sulfur. So of the 20 amino acids, two of them have sulfur as part of their, their R group or side chain. So the big idea with amino acids is that they are, there are 20 of them. They're, the number, the length of them can be different. Some proteins are maybe hundreds of units long. Others are maybe thousands of units long. Um, amino acids can change the sequence, as I had indicated before. And then unlike the way that we work with, uh, with Legos, you can't fold them or twist them uh, without breaking those, those connections. And so in real life, the proteins actually get folded in very elaborate, complicated structures in a three-dimensional nature. So there's different ways for amino acids to build a wide diversity of products, what we call a protein. Here's just a, what we call the linear sequence of two proteins. There's the A2 beta casein in purple, and then the red is A1 beta casein. And basically what you'll see is amino acids that are strung out and connected. So the VAL, TYR, PRO, those are just three letter abbreviations for the amino acids, valine, tyrosine, and proline. And this graphic just shows that the two kinds of um, proteins are identical, except for uh, the position noted where a proline and a histidine are actually switched. So understand the point of this picture is that this right here would be its own Lego, this would be a Lego, this would be a Lego, and they're all connected to make a protein. So as I mentioned in the last slide, keratin is a protein. Um, our bodies build it to make uh, the following things. Uh, so obviously without keratin we'd have some, some pretty bad looking hair, skin, nails, etc. etc. So proteins are all about keeping our body connected so we don't fall apart. Um, another way that enzymes, excuse me, that the proteins are found in our bodies in the form of enzymes. So basically enzymes are the factory workers of the cell. Uh, they do all the, the grunt uh, work of, um, of our biochemistry. And you'll see that the, the gray structure here is the enzyme and it's actually taking in the substrate or it's basically the reactant. There's a nice fit there geometrically between the, the gray enzyme and the green substrate. And then the enzyme actually goes to work on this bond right here and it's, it breaks that bond so it's basically sort of digesting or breaking it down 
and it releases the product. So we have um, hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of enzymes that do lots of different jobs in our body. So our health is dependent on them. So this is kind of the end of part one, the protein uh, uh, section. What I encourage students to do is just to kind of pause. And then um, as you're doing that, think of some questions that you could ask maybe about the structure of an amino acid or how polymers and monomers work together. But the more that you're sort of preparing yourself for potential quiz questions, I think the better off your uh, review will be and, and by extension your performance on the assessment. All right, so here's lipids. I'm going to kind of try to cruise through this quickly. So lipids basically are the fats in our bodies, and they do three jobs. You can see that they are energy molecules. They are kind of like the bumpers of um, our organs, and most of our major organs actually have a layer of fat around them. So it's sort of like um, the packing peanuts that you might use to send some fragile glassware you know, in the mail. And then uh, they help to conserve heat. So the more lipids you have in your body, the warmer you'll be on a cold day. So the polymer name is a lipid. Uh, sometimes we'll just call that as a fat or an oil. And then if we break that down, the monomers are three fatty acids and one glycerol. And again, going back to our Lego theme, if we have three fatty acids all featured in that aquamarine color, they all will connect to glycerol in this fashion. So it's a three to one ratio. This is what it would look like in a structural formula. You'll notice that the glycerol is outlined in red and then the fatty acids are indicated at one, two, and three. Sometimes the fatty acids are all identical. Um, so for example, they would all look like one, uh, and sometimes they're different. So in general, it's a three to one ratio. Uh, where can we find lipids? So in our diets, we can find it in the form of animal fats. Uh, generally, these are not good for us to consume because they are uh, known to clog arteries, a condition called atherosclerosis, um, which is uh, a common sort of uh, precursor or steps taken before uh, a heart attack. So heart disease can be uh, caused in part by our diet. And then vegetable oils would be the healthier choice, uh, but both of those are um, rich in energy. Uh, we can also find it in cell membranes. So the fats that we eat, um, that gets funneled down to making new cells. Uh, cell membrane is defined as a lipid bilayer or a double layer, by meaning two. And you'll see in this picture, you have the cell membrane featured then you have basically one layer of, of lipids here, and you have a second layer here. These lipids are a little different than uh, the one that I showed you before because they have the two fatty acids, and this is actually not glycerol, but this is actually a phosphate group. So we call this a phospholipid, but in, in a sense, it's the same thing. They're both fats. Between the living machinery of the inner cell and the harsh conditions of the outside world stands the cell's plasma membrane. As crucial as this barrier is, it's surprisingly flexible. Push it and watch it move. Poke hard enough and it might break and begin to regroup. The lipid molecules of the membrane naturally assemble in a double layer because their tails repel water as their heads attract it. Throw in some cholesterol and a few carbohydrates and you have the basic structure of a plasma membrane. So that's kind of the end of the lipids. So again, think like a teacher. Uh, think of three possible questions that you could uh, come up with. Uh, and you could use these to quiz yourself or to quiz a, a partner. Um, just uh, the point is just thinking about the content. Okay, third one, carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are like lipids because they are energy rich molecules. They are different in some fundamental ways. So this is a picture of kind of a zoomed in um, uh, look at the structure of a plant uh, leaf. You'll see that um, the leaf here, if we zoom in, we have the cell wall here surrounding the familiar plant cell, uh, green chloroplast there, pretty distinctive. And then if we look at the cell wall in greater detail, you'll see that there's this these microfibrils, which are small strands that are sort of laid down to make the, the woody part of plants. And if we kind of zoom in a little bit more, we follow this trail, you'll notice that we have these six-sided units here that we call glucose and that they're bonded together one to the other one to the other so this glucose would be the monomer and the entire cellulose fiber would be the polymer so there's different kinds of polymers so i mentioned in the last slide that cellulose is a form of of uh, polymer for carbohydrate starch is another one we can actually digest starch we cannot digest cellulose so i wouldn't 
uh, recommend that you go out and start eating grass if you're hungry because it'll just pass through you. Um, we cannot digest that. But if you were to break down starch, it would look like the glucose piece. So again, this six-sided hexagon would be kind of a classic look of the uh, glucose monomer. So we know that molecules are made of carbon. Of course, it's carbon because it's an organic molecule. It's made of hydrogen and water. And if you look at this formula here in point two, the ratio of, of hydrogen to oxygen turns this formula into CH2O. So you might think, hmm, H2O, what do I know that as? Well, that's water. So basically, CH2O is carbohydrate. So the name here, carbohydrate, is really derived or, or, or taken from the fact that when you burn sugars, you produce carbon dioxide, that's the C, and you produce water. So that's the picture of a glucose. The word mono means it's just a one part sugar. Saccharide means sugar, it's Greek. Disaccharide is a two part sugar. And then a polysaccharide would be anything above that too. And again, the most common forms are starch and cellulose. So if we were to go back to our theme of, uh, of Legos, glucose would be the red, and then they would turn into that. And of course, they would extend to the left and the right quite a bit. So that's the end of the carbohydrate. So take a moment and quiz yourself on the structure of, uh, of a carbohydrate, uh, what does it do in our body, those sorts of things. And then our last topic for today are nucleic acids. So this would be the, the molecule that resides in our nucleus, and this is the genetic material of the cell. So this is the familiar look of the DNA double helix. You'll notice that this strand goes down and up and then down, and then this strand kind of does the opposite. So they're actually, it's called a twisted ladder because there's, there's two strands that will rotate around their common center. So that's why they call it a double helix. The polymer name would be uh, a nucleic acid. We would commonly think of DNA or maybe it's a sister molecule RNA as an example of a nucleic acid. Broken down, they have a total of four different building blocks. Adenine featured here, thymine, cytosine, and also guanine. You'll notice that the major difference between them, really the only difference between these is this structure here, excuse me, this structure here. This happens to be a double ring. This is a single ring, single ring, and double ring. So two of the four have the double ring structure and two of the four have the single ring structure like you see here. The importance of that will be talked about in uh, future units. So this is kind of what that uh, double helix would look like, minus the twisting of the ladder. So you can see that you could vary the sequence of these pretty uh, easily. And really the genetic diversity that we see in any species, including human race, uh, is really due to the variation in the sequence of the A's, T's, C's, and G's. And of course this is a very small model. In reality there are a total of uh, 3 billion uh, base pairs in um, each one of your cells. Uh, those code for about 25,000 genes that really make us the unique individuals that we are. So they are genetic material that are found in the nucleus. They're very large, very complex. They can be uh, changed or mutated by a number of different things. Um, we'll talk about that later when we look at genetics. Uh, they're made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen in addition to phosphorus. And then they're basically the godfather of the cell. They're the boss of the cell. They, they're basically telling the cell what to do. Two types of nucleic acids, DNA is on the left, RNA is on the right. And then their, comp their uh, contrast and comparison here, you can see some similarities, some similarities and some differences. That would be the end of nucleic acids. So again, think about, okay, what questions could you ask? Maybe it's how are they built, where are they found, what do they do? What do they look like? And then in summary, um, we talked about biomolecules. Those are molecules with the element carbon. Um, biomolecules are basically four categories. They're carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins. And they are essential to a healthy body and they're essential to study of cell biology. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I would encourage you to go back and review things that maybe you didn't understand the first time, or you're welcome to ask me in class. So um, thanks for joining me. Have a nice day.